Randy Robinson and Life Today TV with my guest, Bishop Kenneth Ulmer of Faithful Central Bible Church in Los Angeles. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Now, your church is right downtown Los Angeles, correct? Uh, actually, a little west of Los Angeles. We're closer to the airport, um, Inglewood area. Inglewood, okay. And so uh, you're God ministering. is doing some great things there. Yeah, how are you? That's what I want to hear about you because you're ministering to, to a lot of people um, that are in tough circumstances. You know, I, th I think we all are <laughs> with the way the economy is going and everything. And, but, you know, God, uh, when, when Jesus left, he gave us such a global perspective. And, and I think one of the encouraging things of many things about the Great Commission is that it challenges us to look beyond ourselves. Jesus says, you're going to be witnesses unto me in your Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. And so I think one of the things that we try to help our people understand is that you're a part of a global context and that you're a part of what God is doing on a kingdom level and that the things that he's doing in your lives, things that you're dealing with in your life is a part of, part of a much bigger picture of what God is doing in the kingdom. Now you see that bigger picture a lot, don't you, as you travel? You know, I, I do, I, I do. Tell, the, me, the tell ministry, me some of the places you, you minister in. You know, the ministry that I'm bishop over is based in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, Macedonia International Bible Fellowship. Um, and it literally represents pastors and leaders from uh, different parts of the continent of Africa, and then of course across America also. And so uh, I think it helps us to see, the, again, the things that God is doing beyond where we are. Uh, the school that I'm affiliated with, I'm Dean of uh, International Studies at uh, the King's University, founded by Dr. Jack Hayford. Yes. And we have, for example, uh, an extension uh, in Hong Kong, and most of our students are in the underground church, and you talk about stories and, and witnesses and testimonies of the things that God is doing. Uh, there in China, man, I, mm. I had a student uh, in my class, uh, he's called, we, I started calling him Little George, little, little short guy, uh, had been in prison for 14 years mm. for preaching the gospel. When you, sh when you uh, shake John's hands, George's hands, his hands were deformed because they would hang him up by his thumbs for preaching the gospel. Wow. Uh, there was another guy who um, was sentenced, I, I don't even know how long he was in, but he was for 14 years, for nine years rather, he was in a work labor camp uh, in uh, Beijing working in the sewers for preaching the gospel. Hmm. And uh, they, they were making bricks out of human waste. Hmm. Uh, for nine years this man was in the, in the, in the literally the bowels, no pun intended, of Beijing working in the sewers because he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, he, he would go to the sewers, man, singing, uh, I come to the garden alone huh. while the dew is still on the roses. And he would witness to, to the guards about the goodness of Christ. Uh, these guys got stories, stories. Uh, uh, one guy uh, was transported uh, from, I guess, one side of China to from one labor camp to the other labor camp. Uh, and they would transport them in uh, pen, pig pens, literally pig pens, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, this high and this long. And they would cram them into these, these pens and stack them like, like cards mm. on the flatbed of a truck and, and transport them from one labor camp to the other three, four, five, six, seven days across, you know, um, across China. And this one particular guy, um, when they got out, he couldn't stand because he had been, this, his, his muscles were atrophied and everything. And, you know, 1,700 miles, whatever it was that they had traveled. Uh, and when they arrived, he had led 11 people to the Lord. Oh, wow. uh, you know, there on the back of a flat big truck, all for preaching the gospel. How long have you been doing this worldwide ministry? I guess for the last 15 years, maybe. How did, when, when you started doing that at first, how did that change your perspective, being an American and sort of seeing how the rest yeah. of the world lives and yeah. how, how tough it is for Christians around the world where we've got it really easy here in the United States, but yet we complain sometimes, right? You know, I, 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 I say almost every time I come back from an overseas trip uh, to our congregation in Los Angeles, I don't know that we American Christians, I don't know that we, we, we American westernized Americanized Christians. I don't know if we truly even understand 
words like sacrifice, mm -hmm. words like commitment, uh, because of the things that I see men and women doing every day, putting their lives on the line for the gospel, um, uh, ministering uh, in, in Dubai, which is a Muslim country, ministering in, in India, uh, my, my driver, I was ministering in India a couple of years ago, and the guy who was young guy, young guy, maybe early 30s maybe, uh, they kidnapped his son on the way to school one day because his dad was preaching the gospel. Wow. Uh, these kinds of things. Um, I, I, I was ministering at uh, the India Pentecostal Church of God, India Pentecostal Church of God, and each year, and they did it, did it the, the time that I was there, they do a report of the pastors and leaders and, and members who had been martyred since the last convention. Uh, but you know, it, 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 it does two things. It challenges us about our own commitment. You know, how, uh, what would it take, you know, uh, to make us fall back from God? What would it make to make us turn around? I, I was doing a sermon uh, um, actually a series on following Jesus. And, and uh, it says in one passage uh, that Peter and James, they dropped, P Peter and John rather, they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. And then you read a little, little further and Jesus talks to the, to the disciples and he says about, um, you know, this is like um, um, you, you, you're, you're having to consume my blood and my body. You're sharing in my suffering. And he says, many of you do not believe. Then the next verse says, and many no longer followed him. And so um, when challenges come, what does it take to turn us around? Uh, when, when Peter, great Peter, <laughs> Jesus is on his way to Calvary. Yeah. And uh, as they're taking him from, from judgment hall to judgment hall, the Bible says, Peter followed him from a distance. Yeah. You know, I, I wonder, your, your, your listeners, your viewers, I wonder what what does the enemy, what card does the enemy play against us uh, to make you back away from your faith? Yeah. When, I, I, I know members in our church, and I've said it oftentimes, many, many, many of the people in our church who gather every Sunday, week in and week out, they are about one crisis away yeah. from falling away from God. Yeah. And yet to see what God is doing on a global perspective beyond your Jerusalem, beyond your Judea, beyond your Samaria, into the uttermost parts of the world, is a testimony of the power of the gospel and the power of Jesus Christ. That's a powerful idea of following Christ from a distance. It's tragic, but you see that a lot. I do think you see that more here in the United States than, than in the Western world, you know, than some other places, partly by just the nature of the society in which we live. We're allowed that luxury to, you know, be all these other things. Oh yeah, and I'm a Christian too. You know, oh sure, I believe, you know, kind of a casual, See, see, I think, I think again, our, our westernized, Americanized Christianity, uh, we, def we use words like sacrifice, like... Um, like give him $50 on the weekend. And, 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 or, or can or, I get home in time for the, for, the, for the game, yeah, you know, yeah, and that yeah, kind of thing. Right. Or, um, you know, we, it's like we, an inconvenience. We, we go in the clock, we, we go in the church watching the clock. Right. I, I, I was at a service in South Africa. Um, and I learned what it meant for the first time. I've been in ministry now for 30 years, and I saw for the first time what it meant when it says in the Old Testament that the glory of God filled the temple, and, and it's the heaviness, the weight of God was so heavy at the dedication of the tabernacle, the dedication of the temple, and it says the glory of God filled the place so that the priests could not stand to minister. It's a picture of the presence of God coming in to such a dynamic effect that uh, uh, my friend Tony Evans says, God doesn't come in to take sides, he comes in to take over. Mm -hmm. And it's the glory of God. And we were there in South Africa, man, for a service was supposed to last maybe an hour and a half or so. They couldn't stop. The pastor said, we cannot stop. And I was ministering on uh, the apostolic anointing and the presence of God filled that place, the weight, the heaviness of God. And I looked and there were people on their knees, on their faces, worshiping God with their hands lifted up. The presence of God, the weight of God. And I don't know that we in America take so much of that for granted. That service went on for five hours, wow. five hours. We started at 3.30 in the afternoon. I left about 8.15 and some people were still there. Yeah. But I think that God is bringing a new revelation, 
new insight and new sensitivity to the fact that, uh, as he says through the prophet Isaiah, he wants to do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. You've also written many books. I know on Life Today on the broadcast show we'll be talking about hearing God's voice, which, which is critical. Where can people find your books? Knowing God's Voice or many of the others that I've written. That's my seventh book now. Uh, Amazon.com has all of my books. Okay, and the website for your church? Faithfulcentral.com. Faithfulcentral.com. Faithfulcentral .com. Great. Thank you for being here. Please do check out uh, Bishop Ulmer's website. Uh, catch some of his message and, and maybe read some of his books because we're not designed to follow Christ from a distance. We are designed to be as committed as those that he ministers to around the world and in Los Angeles. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you, sir.